It's June 23rd, uh, two days after the longest day of the year, and I thought I'd do a quick walk around tour of my garden, just kind of ad lib in it. This is my gate. It's a stylized Symphylans. Um, that's like a little centipede looking bug. When I say little, I mean real little, like an eighth of an inch long. Uh, they devastated my last garden, so I think this is just my, uh, <laughs> my weird primal attempt to uh, appease the uh, some phylons gods. This is where I make my manure tea. So the manure soaks in these buckets for a while, then it gets poured off a few times. You know, I, I pour it off, add water, pour it off, do that a couple times, and then all the sludge gets turned into manure mats on the beds, which uh, that's another video. This, this is going to provide tons of talking points, and uh, I'm going to try to keep it keep it to a minimum here. This is compost piles made out of pallets. As you can see, I put um, extra boards on to minimize the amount of airflow through the sides because the sides tend to dry out real fast. Our summers are very hot and dry and they work okay. Not great, but okay. These are root stalks being propagated. So they're apple root stalks and you cut off the all these shoots get cut off every year and they have little roots on them. And then as the new shoots grow up in the spring, I put these bottomless pots on them, fill it with sawdust, and then that allows new roots, roots to grow on the uh, shoots, the new shoots. And those are the rootstocks that I graft onto. Um, these trees along the driveway here are all interstem trees. So they have a large full-size root stock on the bottom, a short section grafted on to dwarf the tree that um, is just low vigor, so it keeps the tree small, about, you know, about the size these are, a little bit bigger, eight foot is what I'm shooting for. And then, of course, the fruit varieties on top, so they're in three parts. They're very productive. Um, almost all of these are bearing this year. They'll usually start bearing the second year after planting. They're pretty, they're pretty awesome, except for the suckers. They tend to sucker a lot. These are apple seedling trials from last year. So what these are is seedlings. They're, I cross-pollinated one apple with another apple, collected the seeds, planted those, um, grew them out here in this spot, which is these are the original seedlings. And then each one got cut off and grafted to a dwarfing rootstock, like the ones I just showed you and put out in the trial rows for you know however many years it takes for those to start producing fruit. So these I just left for an extra year because I didn't need the beds and that way if any of the trees die out in the field um, I could replace them. Over here we have oblique cordon apples also known as diagonal cordon. So each tree is just basically one long stem with side shoots and they're planted 18 inches apart. And each one of these has about, most of them have two varieties of apples. So about halfway up, I grafted on a second variety of apple. All of them are on dwarfing rootstock to keep them small. And I would say in this row, there are probably close to 45 varieties just in this one row right here. And then there's a second row way back there at the back. So this is kind of where I test varieties for whether they're good here in this climate or not, and also for breeding purposes, because, you know, I have to select the parents I use for breeding. And uh, that information is coming in handy. There's, I can think of at least three apples offhand in these two cordon rows that I've used as breeding parents and that, um, you know, are worth growing, basically. And that information should be... It's already been valuable for me, and I'm hoping it will be valuable for other people if they actually listen to me when I, you know, put this information out there. Because, you know, nurseries often just get kind of whatever is available, and that may or may not end up being what does good in the climate. So, you know, it's a lot of investment to plant a tree and grow it out into a big tree, and you might as well know what does well first. So these are onions that I sell on eBay. All of them are different multiplier onions. So you plant one onion and it divides into several. These are yellow potato onions, green mountain multiplier, and copper shallot down here. 
So that provides me a little bit of income. It's one of my few sources of income at this point. Um, not very much, but it helps. And uh, it works out good for me. These are this year's seedlings for um, apple seedlings. All of these are red fleshed apples crossed with um, some other good dessert apple, basically, for the most part. Tomatoes, carrots. Just starting to pull these carrots. See what we got here. Ooh, that's nice. These are, I grow two Sean and Shin Kuroda. I'm not sure which one this is. It's probably two Sean. Some potatoes going here. I really wanted to grow potatoes this year for sure because I just have not been able to get good potatoes in the store. Last year, I don't think I had a single really good potato. These are Lasota, they're pretty good. Not super versatile, but they're okay. And they seem to be more disease resistant than a lot of the other varieties, you know. If I had my choice, I'd be planting more stuff like German Butterball. More German Butterball. Outstanding eating potato, but seems more disease prone. <clears throat> I can hardly get one around here that's not riddled with some kind of disease. This eggplant is something my friend discovered at the local Rite Aid drugstore. Uh, they have, you know, like little rack outside with uh, <clears throat> plants. And he's been buying them for years. It just says Japanese eggplant on it, but it's the most productive, crazily productive eggplant ever. It's, you know, little, about six, five or six inch long fruits. And you can see already this one has tons of fruits on it and it will just keep pumping those things out all season. Really excellent variety. So this year I'm gonna save seed and try to talk him into saving seed too. So we'll have, you know, maybe 12 or more plants that we've saved seed from. Cause you never know, one day you go to the Rite Aid and that uh, great variety is gone. So this is some carrots. I have to cover these with netting to keep off, mostly um, earwigs actually. And this probably doesn't keep them all off. It didn't come up great. It came up okay, but some, some of them died and the moles actually really do a lot of damage here for my carrots. They'll burrow underneath and cut the roots. You know, they're not eating them. They don't care about eating them. They're just screwing them up by burrowing around looking for insects. This bed is almost all saffron. And it has, uh, it's wire lined because I just, I had gotten up to maybe a thousand bulbs and a gopher got into the bed and just ate, you know, probably two thirds to three quarters of them before I even noticed. So this is, uh, so far this, this is working out okay with the wire mesh here. And they divide pretty fast, so pretty soon I'll have a lot of bulbs to experiment with uh, broader plantings. This is more potato onions for eBay. As you can see, that takes up a lot of my bed space that I could be growing food in, but I also need money. And yeah, well, that's just is what it is. The funny thing is I have all these onion things and onion experiments going, but I don't, I'm not even eating onions right now because it, uh, it seems to exacerbate my autoimmune problems. So these are actually onion seedlings. So these are potato onion seedling trials. And I'm trying to grow, I'm trying to find improved genetics that don't tend to go to seed. And as you can see, some of these are going to seed. In fact, I would say more than half of them are going to seed. And that's kind of what I expected. I think really to make progress in this project is gonna, gonna require growing hundreds of seedlings. At this point, I'm not sure. This is kind of a trial run. I've already tossed out about half of the seedlings. Wait, actually much more than that. I've tossed out the vast majority of the seedlings that I've grown so far. These are potatoes that's like a succession planting. So I'll have potatoes when this other bed runs out. Oh yeah, and this eggplant bed is one of two ambitious biochar projects that I did this spring. This one has about 30%, almost one third of uh, charcoal mixed in the soil, um, but it's also to two feet deep. So as you can imagine, that's, uh, that's a lot of charcoal. 
It was a pretty ambitious project to do both of these, especially since I crushed all the charcoal and a piece of plywood with my shoes. And digging it out, you know, was a bit of work too, not so bad compared to crushing the charcoal. Really crushing the charcoal is turning out to be a major, a major block, you know? I mean, it just really adds to the time. So I got to figure out, like I definitely decided no more foot crushing for me. Um, I just don't have the energy and time to do, do it that way. So I need to build some kind of apparatus. I have some ideas. I dug out a lot of rock, I mean, several wheelbarrows full. So basically I replaced that rock and a lot of not very good subsoil with, you know, a substance that holds water, aerates the soil, provides a place for microbes to grow and catches and holds on to nutrients. So I have high hopes for this as it matures. These plants aren't thriving, but that is probably due to the fact that the charcoal definitely sucks nutrients out um, for a while. And I haven't really kept up on fertilizing these that well, which I, you know, I need to just fertilize them at least once a week with a pretty heavy dose of liquid manure. This one, on the other hand, this bed is the same thing, two feet deep, but about 20% charcoal. And it looks pretty happy. But, you know, I've dumped a lot more manure on this and I put more manure into the bed as I was working. This other one, I hardly put any manure in it. I just put the charcoal in and decided to see what it would be like to feed it from the top. And I think it'd be okay if I just kept up with it. So the rest of this bed will be, this is one and in, divided into thirds. The other two thirds will be 30% and 50%. At least that's the plan. So I'll have a bed that I can compare directly um, 20, 30, and 50%. It'll actually turn out to be more like 20, 30, and 45% or something like that. 